Now, in illustrating personal development, uh, Mr. Schof, my teacher, started with uh, money. You know, money is not the only place to start in talking personal development, but it's where he started. So uh, let me share the thoughts he shared with me back then. Let me share them with you. Here's the best lesson I can give you on economics. It's very simple. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. That's about as simple as I can put economics. Uh, we get paid for bringing value to the marketplace now. It takes time to bring value to the marketplace. However, we do not get paid for time. So we cross that out mistakenly. The man says, I'm making about $20 for an hour. How true. If that was true, you could just stay home, right? And have them send your money. So that's not true. We don't get paid for time. We get paid for value brought to the marketplace. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions of my talk to you today. Is it possible to become twice as valuable to the marketplace and make twice as much money in the same time? Is that possible? The answer is yes. Could you become three times as valuable as you might be right now to the marketplace and make three times as much money in the same time? And the answer is yes, five, ten times. Of course, America is unique. It's a uh, ladder it starts down here, let's say at $5 an hour, and it keeps going up. Top income last year, $80 million. The guy who runs Coca-Cola. Now that's a heck of a ladder. That's why everybody wants to come here, right? The boat people are not headed for Vietnam. People haven't plotted and schemed for 50 years saying, if I could just get to Poland, everything would be okay. Not true. Everybody wants to come to America. And the reason is because we've got the best wind ever blowing in our favor. We've got the best economic opportunity anybody's had in 6,000 years. And all you have to do is understand it and take advantage of it. Now, there's some key questions to ask here. Why would the marketplace pay someone only $5 an hour? Very simple answer. They're not very valuable to the marketplace. Now we must underline to the marketplace. This person might be a very valuable brother. Yes, member of the family. Valuable, yes. Yes, valuable member of the church, of course. Valuable citizen of the country? Yes. Valuable in the sight of God. No doubt we're all of equal value in the sight of God. But if you're not very valuable to the marketplace, you don't get much money, you say, well, it shouldn't be that way. Well, then you got to start your own country. You know, this one's been in process for 200 years, and this is the best we've been able to come up with so far. But here's the key. You don't have to stay. You know, there was a big debate in Congress. Uh, last year that this five dollars was not enough should be six should be six should be six should be six But we don't need legislation six is already on this ladder the next step up You know if you work for McDonald's They'll pay you five dollars an hour take out the trash if you whistle while you take out the trash They'll pay you six dollars an hour So we don't need that legislation. You need just need to take lessons on how to whistle You have a good attitude now as you begin to climb this ladder why would the marketplace pay some people $50? Zero an hour. Answer. Evidently, they must be more valuable to the marketplace. Ten times more valuable. And is that possible for someone to be ten times more valuable and earn $50 an hour instead of five? And the answer is yes. That's what America is all about. Now, why would the marketplace pay some people $500? Zero an hour. Evidently, this person must be much more valuable to the marketplace. That's, the, that's what's important to understand to the marketplace. And would the marketplace pay one person $80 a million dollars for one year's work? And the answer is, of course, if you helped a company make a billion dollars, would they pay you 80 million? I'm telling you it is possible. And that's why America is so exciting. That's why this financial ladder is so exciting. It's possible for all of this to come true for all of you. No matter where you start as a student in school. Just getting started out there in the workplace, this is all possible. For you, other ways to become valuable to your family, valuable to your friends, valuable to the community, valuable to the team, right? Valuable to the, to the team effort, valuable to the concert. But here's what he said to me, in climbing this ladder economically, all you have to do is work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I heard that, it made sense to me. I kept hoping that everything else would change around me. Found out that if I went to work on myself, worked on my skills, worked on my language, if I became better than I was. Each year, if I grew in skills and language and vocabulary and competence, 
then I would become attractive to the marketplace. Not very long ago, a company called me and said, Mr. Owen, we're expanding internationally. So we'd like to have a bit of your expertise to help us. Would you give us a bit of your time? We'll add some millions to your fortune. And I said, okay. And I thought later, isn't that interesting? They would call me. Then my second thought was, of course, they'd call me. Who else would they call? I can get the job done now. What a contrast for me. Farm boy from Idaho, raised in obscurity, parents of modest means broke. When I was 25, how come I would get a telephone call? Someone offer me a lot of money to help them in expanding around the world. Simple answer. Evidently, something happened to me between age 25 and where I am today, and I can tell you where. It all started from my teacher, Mr. Shoff, who said to me, we, uh, we don't have to change what's going on out there. That's the wind that's blowing all. We have to do is change what's going on in here, and now there's several. Ways to do that on personal development, and, and let me give you those ways. Here's the first one we must learn from. Personal experience, pretty simple. Learn from what happens to you. Take a look back over the last few months. Did you make some mistakes? Uh, how could you correct those for the future? Take a look back over the last year. Have you done it right or done it wrong? Let's correct it for the next year. Learn from your personal experience. Uh, Mr. Schoff asked me when I first met him, he said, Mr. Roan, how are you doing? You've been out there now six years, and I said, I'm not doing very well. He said, I suggest you not do that anymore. What a simple, swift analysis to my situation. He said, if you keep doing it, the next six years will be like the last six. You don't want that to happen. Let's make the changes. So learn from your personal experience. Now here's number two, why I came to share this video experience with you today, and that I'll call it Ope Other People's Experiences. That's me, other people. That's your teacher, other people. That's your friends and colleagues. Other people, the people you meet that can pass along to you. Their experiences, what's happened to them, the mistakes they made, how they corrected them, how they changed their health and changed their bank account and changed their income and changed their future. That's it. Other people. Now, there's two kinds of people to learn. From one is failures. Failures don't give seminars, right? That would be valuable. Bring your notebook. Have them tell you how they lost it all and threw it all. Away through their health away and threw their friendships away and things didn't work out well. That would be valuable. But now then we must also learn from positive people that have done well. They've got the health. And so we ask them, how did you become so healthy? They've got the skills. So we ask them, how did you become this skillful? They've got the income. So we ask them, how did you get here in such a short period of time? So now here's what's important in personal development and learning from other people. We learn number one by observation. We learn what we see. Uh, we watch people that are successful in what they do. In sports, we watch their disciplines. In business, we watch their disciplines. By observation, what we can see. Uh, the reason I created this video is something that you could see someone's experiences translated for you. Second, we learn by. What we hear, I've got some of my lectures on cassette tape, so you know you can take them with you wherever you go and learn by listening. Turn your car into a, a mobile classroom and listen. And then listen to the sermon on Sunday morning. Listen to the lectures, listen to the teacher, listen to someone who's got something good to say, and then number. Three is vitally important on personal development in that. Is read all the books, all of the books you can possibly read in your lifetime. Mr. Shof got me started on my library. I've got one of the better libraries. You haven't read everything in it, but uh, feel smarter just walking in it by library reading the books, attending the classes, making sure that I got in front of people that had something good to say. And then I started keeping a journal. One of the major things my teacher taught me was to keep a journal. He said, don't trust your memory. If you hear something good, just make a little note and write it down. Now, at first I took, you know, notes on pieces of paper and torn off corners and backs of old envelopes. And it didn't serve me well, you know, thrown in a drawer. And I learned to keep a journal, a bound copy of all my notes. So I would suggest you do the same things that impress you. A poem that impresses you when you attend a class. Some of the ideas that impressed you, jot them down. You read something in a magazine, right? Some ideas. Take those out, put them in your journal. Keep a good journal the rest of your life. This will serve you well. My journals make up a significant portion of my own library. And if you saw my library and saw my journals, I tell you what. 
you have to say, this is the library and these are the journals of a very uh, serious student. Uh, no wonder Mr. Rowan is invited to lecture and speak on his experiences around the world. So I want the same thing to happen to you, value captured that you can resort. So later go back over it and review it and let it become valuable to you. So that's my first subject, personal development. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Develop the skills, learn the lessons, take the classes, absorb all that is being taught to you these days. And then later on, of course, you can sort it out. What's valuable to you and how to refine it for your business and for your life and for your future. But the main thing is to get it and start this process of personal change, personal development. And let me say it one more time. If you will change, everything will change for you. You'll never be the same. You'll keep growing as you look back on a few months, look back on a few years. You won't believe the progress you can make economically, your relationship with your family, your friends, and whether you're in sports or economics or whatever, I'm telling you. That whole process of committing yourself for personal change, personal value, can really make your life unique and worthwhile. Now setting goals. Let me show you something to turn me every way, but loose I've never. Uh, been the same since I found out about it, learning how to set goals. Not long after I met Mr. Show for having breakfast one morning, Mr. I said, Mr. Rowan, now that we've gotten acquainted, we know each other fairly well, he said. Oh, maybe one of the best ways I can help you. He said, let me see your current. Okay, list of goals, let's go over them and talk about it. And I said, what I don't have a list, he said, well, Mr. Rowan, if you don't have a list of your goals, he said, I can guess your bank. Balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. And, and that got my attention. I said, you mean my bank balance? would change if I had all the list of goals. He said, drastically. So that day I became a student of setting goals. And I've used it to dynamically affect my life. I taught it to some of my business colleagues. We use it to do business around the world. Setting goals, it can turn out to be a drama for your life. Here's what goals are your vision of the future. Uh, your vision of the future. Now there's uh, two ways to face the future. One with apprehension, two with anticipation. Guess how most people face the future with apprehension? A major reason why they don't have it well designed. They've left the design of their future to somebody else. And if you don't make plans of your own, guess what? You'll probably fall into someone else's plans. Guess what someone else may have planned for you? Not much. If all of your negative relatives all turn positive, what will that do for your future? Not much. If prices come down a little, what will that do for your future? Not much. If the economy gets a little better, what will that do for your future? Not much. If circumstances get a little better, what will that do? Not much. If the uh, weather gets a little better over the next few years, that'll do. Not much. I mean, you can go right down this whole scenario list. How most people all their lives, with their fingers crossed, count on this, not much. That's why 10 years from now, they'll be driving what they don't want to drive. Living where they don't want to live, wearing what they don't want to wear, doing what they don't want to do. Having what they don't want to have maybe become what they didn't want to become. And it all starts by counting on something that's not going to count much. You say, well then how can my life dramatically change? You got to count on yourself. And here's one of the things you got to count on your ability to design the future. It's called the promise. And the promise of the future, if you'll design it well, can have an awesome effect on your life. But if you face the future with apprehension, you'll take hesitant steps all day, uncertain steps all day. If you take uncertain steps all day for six years, you can imagine how empty your life can be. We've got to help our kids with the promise of the future. Now here's what's connected to the promise, the price, the price to pay. But I'm telling you, the price is easy if the promise is clear. One of the better notes to make for today, the price is easy if the promise is clear and powerful. But the price seems almost too much to pay. Too much to get over or too much to accomplish if the promise isn't clear, if the promise isn't. Powerful, I'm telling you. Kids will pay the disciplines if they can see the promise. One of our biggest challenges as parents in the 90s is to help our kids see the promise of the future. That's why I'm teaching financial independence. How to become wealthy and powerful and sophisticated and healthy and unique. All of the stuff kids would hope to go. For it's all possible, this is America. That's the promise of the future, the price. 
a few simple disciplines practiced every day. And I'm telling you, the kids will pay the price of the simple disciplines if they can. Say the promise of the future. Uh, but if they can't see, they don't want to pay. And the same is true of all of us. We will pay the most extraordinary disciplines if we can see the promise of the future called setting goals. So I'm asking you to get a handle on the future. Uh, I'm asking you not to leave it to anyone else. Not don't leave it to the company. Companies got their own goals. I'm asking you to set your own goals, your personal goals. Income goals and financial goals and health goals and spiritual goals and where do you want to go? And what do you want to do? And what do you want to see? And what do you want to be? That's it. Promise of the future. Design your own future. It's within your hands and your capacity to do so. Here's how simple now goal setting is. It's not mysterious. You don't have to anchor. You don't have to focus. You don't have to visualize. No, that's here's how simple goal setting is. Change my life. Decide what you want and write it down. I mean, that's how profound this stuff is. Decide what you want and write it down. Make a list. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to see? What do you want to see? What do you want to be? What do you want to have? What do you want to share? What projects would you like to support? What would you like to be known for? Uh, what skills would you like to learn? Some extraordinary things you'd like to do. Ordinary things you'd like to do right. Silly little things you'd like to do. Very important. Things you'd like to do. Decide. Decide on all that stuff and write it down. Write it down. Write it down. That's how simple this stuff is. And it's your own private. List if it's really private. You know, on your list, put some stuff in code. And nobody can understand it. If this lift fell into unfriendly hands and simple things, whatever, fools. Things doesn't matter. It's your list. Keep your list. If you, I keep my list in my journal so that I can go back five years ago. You know, with my list and I'm a little embarrassed. Here's what I thought was so. Important now how my philosophy. That's changed from 10 years ago, five years ago, three years. Uh, go, here's my old list. Here's my new list. Here's what's valuable to me now. Here's what I want my life to be now. Here's where I want to go, what I want to do, what I want to see. Keep your list of goals so that it shows your growth. Shows your ability to change and grow. Your philosophy grows and expands what's valuable, setting goals. It doesn't matter how small foolish it is. Put it on your list. My Japanese friend, Turo Aikide, put on his first list a Caucasian gardener. Good morning. I thought that was good. I like that. Have you got this? Profound thing now in setting goals. Here's how profound it is. Decide what you want and write it down. Get together with your wife. Decide. Get together with your kids. Decide. Get together with your business colleagues. Decide. Decide. Write it down. Make a list. Okay, that's how easy it is. Now let me give you one more scenario on setting goals when I started making my. First list, Mr. Shelf, said Mr. Owen. Looks like we're going to be together for a while, he said. I've got a suggestion for you, he said. Uh, I think one of the first goals you ought to set, you're 25. Year old American male, sure, you've made some mistakes, but now you're on the road to better. Things you got a family worth. It reasons makes the difference. And uh, he said, you've got every reason to do this. He said, why don't you among all the goals? You're going steady. He said, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? A millionaire. This is America. All the possibilities are available. Uh, why don't you set a goal to become a millionaire? He said, it's got a nice ring to it. Millionaire enough zeros to impress your accountant. Millionaire. And he said, here's why now I thought the uh, man doesn't need to teach me why. I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great to have $1 million? He said, no, that's not it. Here's why. And I had one of the greatest lessons I ever learned, and I'm about to share it with you. This will be worth the price of being here today. If you can capture what I'm about to share with you, babysitter fees, whatever else you paid. Some of you missed some sales today to be here. So this is a costly day for you. But what I'm about to share with you changed my whole life. Here's what Mr. Shelf said, set a goal to become a millionaire. And he said, here's why, for what it will make of you to achieve it. And I got one of the greatest. Classes in one sentence I've ever received in my life. Set a goal that'll make you stretch that far for what it will make of you to achieve it. What a brand new reason for setting goals. What an all encompassing challenge to have a better vision of the future. What for two? 
Uh, see what it will make of you to achieve it. And here's why the greatest value in life. Tell them what you get the greatest. Value in life is what you become. Major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here. That's not the major question. The major question to ask is what am I becoming here? It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become. That makes you valuable. So Shelf said, set A. Goal to become a millionaire for what it will make of you to achieve it then. He said, when you finally have become a millionaire now, he said, what's important is not the money. So I thought, wow, I've got some more to learn. He said, no, no, mister, and I'm telling you honestly, you could just give the money away now. I did better than that, right? I told you I lost it all. I'm rich by the time I'm 31. I'm a millionaire. I'm broke by the time I'm 33, so I didn't have to give it all away. I lost it all. Foolish mistakes I made that I'm a farm boy from Idaho. That early money drove me bonkers. I used to say, how many colors does it come in? I'll buy them all. I just went, I went crazy over that. First money, I just went crazy. And then I made that one foolish mistake, right? Continuing guarantee. I mean, you know, I'm so naive off the farm. I don't know. Look, continuing means and a few other mistakes. And by the time I'm 33, I'm broke. Now I've made and lost millions since then. But what an experience that was. And I'm telling you, even the man was right. When I finally was broke at age 33, guess what I discovered? My money did not mean that much. It represented only a fraction of all my assets. Because they once you become a millionaire, Mr. Own, you can give all the money away because he says, uh, what's important is not the money. What's important is the person you've become what? A whole new concept on setting goals. Now there's two parts to this. And then we're wrapping up goals. Here's the first part. Now on this goal setting for what you become one. Don't set your goals too low. Interesting. We teach in leadership. Hey, you'll find it on the cassettes. Don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations are high. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure's on to perform, to grow, to change, to develop, to read, to study, to develop skills. I belong to a small group. We do business around the world. You cannot believe the expectations at that level. What we expect of each other in terms of excellence far beyond average. Why? so that we can each grow, so that we can receive from the group. We can contribute to the uh, group something unprecedented. It's called living at the summit and go where the demands are high. Go where the expectations are. Strong so that it'll provoke you, push you. Uh, urgently insist that you not remain the same for the next couple of years, the next five years, that you'll grow and change. So don't set your goals too low. Uh, the guy says, well, I don't need much. Well, then you. Don't need to become much now. Here's the last part on setting goals. Don't compromise, don't sell out. There were some things I went for back in those early years that I paid too big a price for. If I'd have known how much it was gonna cost, me, I never would have hey, paid, but I didn't know. Don't sell out. Ancient phrase says, count the cost, count the cost, count the cost. An ancient story says, Judah's got the money. You say, well, that's a success. Story, no, no. It's true, 30 pieces of silver in those days was a sizable fortune, you say. Well, if a guy's got a fortune, right? That's a success. Story, no, you don't understand. His name was Judas. Doesn't that ring a bell? Judas, you say, oh, yes, Judas. Judas, the traitor. That's right, the traitor got the money. Doesn't that change the story? And the answer is, of course, it changes the story. Let me give you my best opinion I get paid staggering money for my opinion so please write it down my opinion here's my opinion each person's philosophy is the major factor in how your life works out each person's philosophy is the major factor in how your life works out I want that to be as emphatic as possible because I truly believe it now up until I was 25 that would never have occurred to me that my personal philosophy was the major fact if you would have known me when I was 25 years old, and you would have said, Jim Rohn, how come you find yourself here? This is pitiful. Living in America, you're broke. You got and is in your pocket. You got nothing in the bank. Creditors are calling you behind on your big mouth promises to your family. You've been to at least one year of college. How come you find yourself in this pitiful position if you would have asked me that? Question when I was 25, it never would have occurred to me to blame my philosophy. That would not have occurred to me. 
I would not have said to you, well, I got this lousy philosophy. What else would you expect? I mean, that, that would not have occurred to me. You don't jot those little phrases. Down should, could don't. Here's what we call that formula for disaster. And all you've got to do to start now, the process of life change. You start somewhere and it doesn't even matter where. You can start with good health or you can start with something else. The key is to start by saying I'm going to start the process in each category. Uh, finding by my own research and that's why. Uh, seminars are so valuable, that's why information is so valuable. That's why somebody willing to take the time to share is so valuable, just to help boil it down in some. Thorm to the half a dozen few things that takes care of most of it and then, oh, let me get on with practicing. It and where you start doesn't matter. The process of life change can start with as simple a. Process is an apple a day, which means I'm on the road to cleaning up neglect, I'm going to walk around the block. I'm going to get the next book of my new library. I'm going to get a journal. She'll taught me to keep a journal, he said. Don't just let ideas get by. You don't. Trust your memory if you're serious about really becoming an entrepreneur, if you're serious about affecting other people's lives, if you're serious about fortune, if you're serious about wealth and health. If you're serious, start collecting ideas, go over them and review them. Uh, then make them a part of your life and practice and don't ever look back. That formula helped. Changed my life, brought me to where I am. Today, and I'm so delighted now to have the opportunity to go around the world telling the same story that I heard when I was 25 years old. There's a few basic things, and if you practice them every day, I'm telling you there's no reason why you can't have the health you want, uh, the, the relationship you want, the fortune you want, the money you want, the income you want, the sophistication you want, the culture you want, the prestige you want, the influence you want. All of it, it's wrapped up I. Think in a nutshell of what I've just explained to you a few things. Now let me give you one more part of it. Here it is. Once you've found the few things that makes the most difference. Now, the most of your time working on those few things. That now is another part of the clue. The first part of the clue is to get the information and consistently practice it. But here's the rest of. The formula, spend most of your time on it. The reason why. A lot of people don't do that well is because they, major and minor things. Uh, they spend too much time on things that don't count much. And they spend too little time on things that would count. Here's a guy in the last 10 years who's bought 2,000 donuts and two books and this guy says, you know, my life isn't working well. Well, anybody in this audience could give him a seminar, right? Once we knew these numbers, here's what we might suggest to this guy. Hey, this may be one of your major problems in the last 10 years you've spent. Too much money on donuts and not enough money on books. You spent too much money feeding the body and not enough money gathering food for the mind. And it's not the miracle of your body that works out your future. It's the miracle uh, of your mind if you nourish the body and neglect to nourish the mind. I'm telling you, you're going to have all kinds of problems and all kinds of difficulties. So we would suggest one of our suggestions in our seminar to this man would be in the next 10 years, spend a lot less money on donuts and a lot more money on books. Sued for thought, bread for the head. We call it, you got to have ideas that feed your mind, not just your body. And the miracle of the mind is so fabulous to work out your future, to give you all the equities you could possibly hope for, to give you every dream and every treasure you could possibly want for you and your family. And but the people you care most about. It's all available. But it is a very basic, simple process. Once you've found a few things, spend most of your time and money working on those few things. Okay, we call these basics basics, fundamentals. Um, another good word if you're going to play football, you got to learn the fundamentals. And there's about how many? There's about a half to a dozen, right? It, it'll make you good at it if you practice those half a dozen. A few other things, yes, but the half A. Doesn't or what's important to lay the groundwork. Basics. Fundamentals. Now let's talk about the fundamentals of life. Let me give you this little series to John one fundamentals of life one. Uh, there's just a few. There's just a few fundamentals of life about half a dozen, about half a dozen. Fundamentals of life. There's just a few. Uh, here's number two. Once you know them, you know them. I mean, there's nothing difficult here. It's pretty easy to figure out why people are broke and it's pretty easy to figure out how people get rich. 
just no big deal. Fundamentals of life one, there's just a few. Number two, once you know them, you know them. Now here's three, there's no new ones. Written history is what, about 6,000 years. There's nothing new here. Now, there might be a new way to say it. There might be a new way to apply it to the 20th century, getting ready for century 21. But this stuff is basic. It's old. It's fundamental. So be aware of somebody who comes along and says, we've got new truth. Say, no, you can't have new truth. Truth is old. So be a little suspicious. God, the guy says, we're manufacturing antiques. You got to come watch our place. Wouldn't you be, wouldn't you be a little suspicious? You say, no, you can't manufacture antiques. Antiques are what old sold. Antiques are like truth. Truth is old now just because you've discovered it. There's no sign it's new. Say, no, truth is old. The, the fundamentals go way back. The fundamentals of sowing and reaping go way back. The fundamentals, good. Evil go way back. I mean, there's nothing new here. All we need to do, though, is to just bring our intellectual discovery process to bear and see if we can't find those few things, then the rest of it is to get. Busy practicing those few things, we might all agree on one philosophy. This is where the value of uh, human life begins to show versus all other life forms. I call it simply a guidance system, settling on certain questions and making decisions about what direction in life you're going to take. Setting goals, making plans. This guidance system, I uh, uh, boil it down to each one's personal philosophy, a guidance system. And we all needed a guidance system for two reasons. For your notes, one to avoid the dangers. Somebody's got to give us some clues first on how to avoid the dangers and two, to take advantage of the opportunities. To see and understand the opportunities, take advantage and to avoid the dangers. It's about as simple as I can put it, a guidance system necessary to do that while we listen. Two ideas, whether they come from me or from. So when else be a collector of good ideas, get more serious about altering the course of your life and you can. Regardless of what happens the next five years, getting ready for the turn of the century, you can wind up where you want to be. The money, the joy, the pleasure, the satisfaction. A uh, set of sale. Now, what is philosophy if it's so important? I teach kids how to be rich by 4,035 if you're extra bright. Much sooner, if you find a unique opportunity, kids say, hey, that sounds good to me. How do I do it? And I say it starts with your philosophy. So kids ask me what is philosophy. It's kind of a big word. So I've broken it down for them, made it. Uh, easier for me to understand, here's my definition of philosophy. Philosophy comes from one, the collection of all that you know. Gathering knowledge is the first key to. Developing the philosophical set of sale. And then number two, deciding which of this information is valuable enough to bet your money and your time. That's about as simple as I can put it to change the set of sale regardless. Of the wind that blows. First you search for knowledge, then you've got to sort through it and decide which of it is valuable enough to spend money and time. That is one of the best equations I know of. You might know 1,000 things, but you can't do 1,000 things. But you've got to sort through a lot of information and boil it down to the things that really matter to you and utilize that as the most important pieces, deciding what's valuable. So first of all, we got to gather knowledge. When I have a chance to talk to my high school friends, First thing I tell them is you got to have the information. Get it while you're here. Don't, don't leave school without it. It's one of my little phrases for my high school friends. Ah, what they teach here. What you think of it. That's up to you. What you're going to do with it, that'll. It won't be up to you. Uh, but right now, this is the important thing is to get it. You can sort through it. You can cast aside whatever is not going to work for you in the future. But the important thing is to be serious enough to get it. Okay? Teach them. There's nothing worse than being stupid, right? Being broke is bad to being stupid is what's bad, and what's really bad is being broke and stupid. Nothing much worse than that. Unless you're sick, right? Sick, broken, stupid, that's about A. Unless you're ugly, surely that would do it. Ugly, sick, broken, stupid, life's most negative scenario. So one you've got to know, you've got to have the information. Now where do we get? ideas and information we've got this marvelous ability here like no the life form on earth has to alter the course of our life you don't have to keep flying as if south is not getting you the money and the joy and the pleasure telling you can alter the course you're not like just a blind animal that has to be driven by instinct in the genetic code so if we want to change our life we've just got to use 
this marvelous mechanism to gather more ideas and information and see if it'll pay off for us. So where do we get this? We've got this. Down one from PE, call it. Personal experience, just make it a point from now on to learn more from your own personal experience. It's probably the best university in the world. For your own personal experience, you've been through enough that could teach you personal experience. A lot of the questions from your personal experience log. The answers from your personal experience, right? Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of health. And here's where it can all. Start paying more attention to your own personal experience. One way to learn to do it right is what do it? Wrong. That's one way to learn. Now the key is, don't let it take too long. If you've done it wrong for 10 years, we suggest that's long enough. We don't suggest 10 more years just to prove. A point. Now you can prove any point in 10 years. In 10 years, your health disciplines will be on track or what off track. Your financial independence will be on track or off track. It doesn't take that. Long to come to the conclusion based on your own personal experience. Uh, whether you're on track or off track, in a few years you've either got the breath or you haven't got the breath. You got the money or you haven't got the money. You've got the self-esteem or you haven't got the self-esteem. I mean, it doesn't take. Much from your personal experience, Shelf was swift. To point out my personal experience said, let's learn from that, he said. Mr. Owen, you've been working six years. I said, yes, sir. He said, how are you doing? I said, not very. What up? He said, I suggest you not do that anymore. What a swift analysis of my current situation. He said, couldn't we find out what happened the last six years so that you can alter the course the next six years that it never occurred? To me, he said, I'm telling you, we can learn so much from the last six that we can make the next six years totally be different than the last six. And that's exactly what he did for me. That second six years, my life so swiftly changed. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, age 25, I was broke. At age 31, I was rich. And he said, Mr. Owen, if you'll make these changes starting today, he said, the next six years of your life will be totally different than the last six. I took him up on that. So now let me give you that promise in case you have to leave early. Here's a promise that changed my life for your notes. He said, if you will change, everything will change. For you, if you will change, everything will change for you. Do something different the next 90 days than you did the last 90 days, like picking up the books to read. Do something different like the new health disciplines, relationship with your family, whatever it is, doesn't matter how small it is. If you'll start doing different things with the same circumstances, since we cannot change the circumstances, but we can change ourselves. We can change what we do. And then he gave me another secret to success when he said, what you have at the moment, Mr. Rohn, you've attracted by the person you've become. What you have at the moment, you've attracted by the person you've become. Few little simple principles here. Once you understand these, it starts to explain so much. Now, sometimes it's a little tough to take blaming yourself instead of the marketplace taking responsibility instead of putting it off on someone else. Those, that transition sometimes is a challenging mission. And this one was a little tough for me. Changes. And he said, it'll all change for you. Shelf said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. If you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on my cell. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, latest tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. 
and start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job, work hard on yourself and develop the skills, work hard on yourself and develop the graces, all of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable to the company, I'm telling you, no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing, not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of seasons. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy, work on your attitude, work on your personality, work on your language, work on the gift of communication, work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change for you. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue, chase, run after. Success is something you develop, something you become, you attract success. So the whole key to unlock all the treasures, whether it's economic treasures or spiritual treasures, financial, social, personal, every way you can possibly think of is by your own personal development. And then he added one more, which is so important, and it's probably worth the price of the seminar. Here it is. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here, the major question to ask on the job is, what am I becoming here? Not what am I getting, what am I becoming? So it's very important what you become. Because what you become attracts. If you become cynical, you attract cynicism. What you become attracts. So this whole subject of personal development was so vitally important to me. It changed my life. I was a millionaire by age 31. And that was just the economic part of it. it. Took me six years from age 25 to age 31. It was unbelievable. Mr. Schoff, over a five year period before he died at age 49, who taught me some extraordinarily simple things. He only went to the ninth grade in school, never finished high school, never went to college, never went to university. So he put his ideas and his experiences in very simple language, which I think for me, you know, a kid from the farms of Idaho, that simplicity was so important. Because if it would have been technical, I'd have missed it. If it would have been mystic, I, you know, I would have, you know, backed away. But it was just basic, blunt, ABC, familiar stuff that I hadn't thought of before. And he did start to remind me, and those ideas changed me. Mr. Schoff was the one when I said, you know, this is all they pay. He said, you've been working six years, Mr. Owen. How come you're not doing better? And I said, this is all the company pays. He says, well, that's not true. I said, no, this is my paycheck. This is all the company pays. He said, no, this is all the company pays you. I thought, <laughs> that's a new way to look at it, right? He said, doesn't the company pay two, three, four, five times this amount to other people? And I said, well, yes. He said, well, then this is not all the company pays. It's all they pay you. And if you qualified, wouldn't your income grow two, three, four, five times? I said, I suppose. So he said, we don't have to work on the company. We have to work on you. See, that was the beginning of what he called the phrase personal development. I told him things cost too much. He said, no, you can't afford them. I thought, well, that's a new concept. I hadn't thought about that. You know, we put some of the valuable things on the high shelf so you can't get to them until you qualify. If you want the things on the higher shelf, you've got to stand on the books you read. Every book you read, you get to stand a little higher so you can get the things on the higher shelf. See, I learned those concepts. It was so incredible. And here was the most important one. Success is something you attract by the person you become.
See, that phrase changed my life. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue. It's like chasing a butterfly. You can't quite catch it. Success is something you attract by becoming an attractive person. See, those were new concepts to me. I'm just working hard trying to make a living. Here's what he said to me. This changed my life. I got a chance to teach this in Moscow and across Russia. Three visits, now the fourth. Here's what Shof taught me. Profits are better than wages. Nobody taught me that in high school. Nobody taught me that. I went to one year of college. Nobody taught me. Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. And how could you work on both a living and a fortune? He said, well, you could start part-time working on your fortune while you're working full-time on your living. I thought, wow. Now, he said, it's fun to get up in the morning. Not just getting up, go to work to pay the rent. But to get up to go to work to make a fortune. First to make a living for my family. Second to make a fortune. And he taught me how to make both a living and a fortune. Guess what I did? I learned how to make both a living and a fortune. And I found out anybody could do it once they get the information. And at age 25, I started receiving this extraordinary information. Here's what he said. Your income is directly related to your philosophy, not to the economy. I thought no one ever told me that. I kept hoping the economy would change. He said, no, your philosophy has to change. I assured him that I had my fingers crossed. He said, that won't help. Then what could I do to change my income and multiply it by two, by three, by five, by ten, and then multiply it by ten again? What could I do? And he started giving me the disciplines and the process of learning the skills to change my life. This was an extraordinary man. Those were extraordinary times for me. Life-changing in every manner that you can imagine. But very simple ABC concepts. Here's what I learned. Not to search for the exotic until you've discovered the basic. And those basic philosophies that he shared with me during that time were life-changing. Now, if you're excited and you're ready to change, let me give you three steps to start life change that can change your life, your personality, your lifestyle, everything can change. Here's the steps. Number one, find out how things work. The first key to doing better is find out. To change your life, really, you need ideas. There isn't anything an idea can't change. And Schultz taught me the major problem is lack of an idea, not a problem. At first, I didn't have any money. I said to Mr. Schultz, I don't have any money. He said, that's not a problem. Now, see, up until then, I always thought it was. <laughs> right? I was confused. He said, no, no, the problem is lack of an idea on how to create money and wealth. It isn't lack of money, it's lack of ideas. So if you get the ideas, see, so you can change anything. Now, to get ideas, you need a constant study of finding out. Now, Schultz also said, when you find out something that works, Put the information in your journal. Don't use your head for a filing cabinet. Put it in your journal so that you can do the next best thing. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Go over it. And if you repeat it, go over it, sure enough, someday, some mysterious day, the idea takes root, starts to grow, and shows up in your bank account, and your dress, and your personality, and your lifestyle. But capture the ideas in your journal. Find out how things work. Shof gave me this word for my life change. He said, study. Great word. If you wish to be successful, study success. If you wish to be happy, study happiness. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Don't leave it to chance. Make it a study. Some people just go through the day with their fingers crossed. See, that won't do it. 
You've got to study the things that can change your economic, social, spiritual, personal life. Now, here's a qualifying phrase, and we'll have several of these qualifying phrases throughout the seminar. Here's the first one. You may not be able to do all you find out. I understand that. You may not be able to do all you find out, but you should find out all you can do. See, you don't want to wind up at the end of your life and discover that you've lived only one tenth of it. And the other nine tenths went down the drain, not for lack of opportunity, for lack of information. So that's number one, find out how things work. Now here's the best human virtue for finding out, curiosity. Make a note of that, curiosity, be curious. You might add a word to it that'll help, childish curiosity. What will kids do if they wanna know something bad enough? Bug you, that's the phrase. They can ask a thousand questions. You think they're through, they got another thousand. They'll drive you to the brink. It's a virtue. When you gotta know, be like a child. Now, if you're curious, let me give you three ways to find out how to change anything, any life direction, any dimension. Here's three ways to find out how to change anything. Number one is to read. Become a good reader. All of the successful people I know and work with around the world, they're all good readers. Curiosity drives them to read. They gotta know. They just read, 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 read. Become a good reader. Now that's my opinion. Listen to the other lecturers and listen to me and make up your own mind. Don't be a follower, be a student, okay? I say, really, for life change, you gotta read. One way to learn is from your own experiences, but another way to learn is from other people's experiences. See, one book might save you five years if you read it. Did you know there's books on how to be stronger, more decisive, be a speaker, be a leader, have a better effect on other people. Develop your personality. Did you know there's books on that? And people don't read them? How would you explain that? And they can read? Did you know that hundreds of successful people have written their stories in books and they wrote down how they did it and people don't read it? How would you explain that? The guy's busy, I guess. You know, you get tied up. The guy says, well, yeah, you work where I work, but the time you struggle home, it's late. You got to eat a bite of supper, watch a little TV, get to bed. You can't sit up half the night reading, 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 reading. And the guy's behind on his car payment. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you got to be better than sincere and work hard. Otherwise, at the end of your life, you'll wind up cold, stony broke. You got to be better than a good worker. You got to be a good reader, my opinion. Now, you don't have to read half the night, okay? Although if you're broke, that's not a bad place to start, right? <laughs> Get on with the cure. But put this in your notes, 30 minutes a day. Just devote 30 minutes a day to reading. Stretch it to an hour if you can, but at least 30 minutes. 30 minutes a day, read something positive, something challenging, something inspirational, something instructional, at least 30 minutes a day. And here's the next clue, every day, don't miss. Once you set this up, just don't miss. Miss a meal, but not your 30 minutes. Because you can get along without some meals, but you can't get along without some books. There's a Bible phrase that says, humans cannot live on bread alone or just food. 
It says the next most important thing to food is words. Words nourish the mind, makes us different than animals and dogs. Words nourish the soul. So humans have to have food and words in order to be happy and healthy. I told my staff the other day, some people read so little, they've got rickets of the mind. They're undernourished mentally. So to get a good diet of words, I suggest good reading habits, 30 minutes a day. Now, some people don't read because they don't read well. I understand that. And the national average is fairly poor. People have fairly poor reading skills. They're still trying to operate on awkward old skills of the past, right? Reading one word at a time. And with such poor skills, when you read, the mind usually wanders. Because you can think about a lot of things. The mind is an incredible mechanism. And if you read poorly, the mind wanders around thinking of other things while you're trying to read. Did you ever read a page and wonder what it said? Right? Say, I got to read that again. Right? That's because the mind is just doing this job, right? Just wandering around. Did you ever read yourself to sleep? See, that's another problem. The mind says, who needs this? Just shuts off, right? Poor skills. Or a guy looks at a book, 500 pages, and says, no, you starting, right? I mean, I'd never get through this one. Anyway, in our weekend seminar, we take a whole section, about two, three hours, and we go through reading skills. How to read a book a day is the title of that subject. And I'll tell you what, if you can read a book a day, it'll change your whole life. I mean, a book a day will change your whole life. Expose yourself to a whole variety of things, spiritual, moral, personal, economic, history, geography, everything. I mean, you can really change if you read a book a day. So you might want to attend the weekend, get in on those reading class skills. It's incredible. A book a day will change your life. But hey, whether you read slow or fast, or whether you read awkwardly, or whether you read well, here's the key. Read. Don't miss. Here's what reading is. Reading is tapping the treasure of ideas. That's what reading is. Tapping the treasure of ideas. And ideas can change any part of your life. And if you've got a good excuse not to tap the treasure of ideas at least 30 minutes a day, or spend the money and get the books, I'd love to hear it. Some people have excuses you wouldn't believe. I say, John, look, I got this gold mine. I got so much gold, I don't know what to do with it all. Come on over and dig, John says. I ain't got a shovel. I say, well, John, get you one. He says, you know what they want for shovels? <laughs> Let me give you the two books that started my library 20, at age 25. My library now is worth many, many, many thousands of dollars, but it started with two books. Mr. Schof recommended these to me, got me started. Schof said, become self-educated. He said, standard education will get you standard results. And you can check those numbers and see if that's what you want. But if you want to go beyond that, you now have got to become self-educated. So he got me started on my library. He said, one of the ways is build your library. Now, I had a Bible, right? That was 66 books, so that's a pretty good deal. But here's what else he recommended. He said, number one, get the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich, if you don't already have it. The title should intrigue you. Think and Grow Rich. I found that book in a secondhand bookstore. I paid 47 cents for it. I've still got it. It's one of the rare hardback covers. I read it several dozen times. Shof taught me repetition is the mother of skill. Some of the ideas in that book helped to change my life. As I look back on it now, the book was worth several hundred thousand dollars and I bought it for 47 cents. What a lesson I learned, the difference between cost and value. Before I met Mr. Shove, I used to ask, how much does it cost? After I met Mr. Shove, I asked, how much is it worth? I started basing my life on worth instead of cost and everything changed. 
But that was book one, Think and Grow Rich. The second book he recommended I get was a book on nutrition. Shelf said, study nutrition. I think that first book was by Adele Davis. Eat right to keep fit, I think. I've got lots of them now, but I think that was the first one. Shelf said, study nutrition. And there's all kinds of books on nutrition. Just read them all. Some are a little weird, but, but read them all. Right? If you're weird, do the weird stuff. I mean, whatever. But read them, then make up your own mind. Remember, don't read and become a follower. Read and become a student. Make up your mind, find a plan that works good for you, but get the books on nutrition. Here's what Mr. Shelf said to me. Vitality plays an important part in doing well. Vitality. He said some people don't do well because they don't feel well. It's not that they're not intelligent. It's that they're ill. They don't have the zing and the fire and the vitality to do well. So he put it right on me about studying nutrition. He said, Jim, you wouldn't believe it. He said, I got this friend of mine raises racehorses. The guy's got nine books on how to feed horses. He does not have a book on how to feed himself. He said, my friend studies horse nutrition. <laughs> studies it. Vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, protein, amino acids, carbohydrates, fats, enzymes, proper balance for his horses, Shof said. He's a fanatic. And he said, you ought to see his horses. They're magnificent, beautiful, powerful animals. They can run like the wind. And he said, you ought to see him. He's a wreck. <laughs> he said, the guy feeds his horses better than he feeds himself. Do you believe that? In my later studies, I discovered some people feed their dogs better than they feed their kids. If you can believe that. Anyway, I didn't mean to give you a health lecture here tonight, okay? But hey, take care of yourself. Work on that part because it's one of the answers to doing well. There's even a Bible phrase that says many times the spirit is willing, but the body's weak. Now see you're in trouble. And that is a problem. You wake up in the morning and the mind says, let's go get them. And the body says, I can't even get out of bed. <laughs> so you got to work on both sides of this, right? Okay. But get your library started. Get the books. Put it together. Books are the trademark of civilization. It's fascinating to walk into someone's home and browse through their library because your library says something about you. So put your reading together. Very important. Here's the second way to find out how to change your life. And that's to listen. Get around successful people and listen. Now you can also learn from unsuccessful people. Take notes on both. Negative and positive. On the negative, the notes are called what not to do. And you got to learn what not to do as well as what to do. So learn from the negative as well as the positive. Okay. Find out what poor people read and don't read it. Right? <laughs> That's good information. Learn from the negative. But now you can also learn from the positive. Get around successful people. Listen to what they say. Listen to how they say it. It's important. We've all got about 16 waking hours. Practice listening those 16 hours. And I say practice listening because listening isn't easy. I found out it's easier to talk than it is to listen. But if you will practice listening the 16 hours you're awake, sure enough from surprising sources comes great ideas. In sales training we teach. If you want to learn sales, listen to the kids. Kids have got to be the master salespeople of all time. They have no equal. Father tells his young son, no, you cannot have an ice cream cone. 30 minutes later, he's licking on one. <laughs> That'd be 30 minutes worth listening to. They got moves you wouldn't believe. Persistence runs deep like the ocean. And the kids never took a class on how to overcome objections. They already know how. They don't need classes. 
So listen and learn. Now here's some of the best advice I've got for the whole evening. It won't get any better than this. This is it. Poor people ought to take rich people out to dinner and listen. That's some of the best I got. <laughs> if a guy's not doing well, one of the first things he ought to do is find a guy that is doing well and offer to buy him his dinner. Spend 50, 60, 80, 100 dollars. Go for the full nine course. Start him on the juices and hors d'oeuvres. Get him started talking. The salad takes 15 minutes. Keep it rolling. Biggest steak in town takes 45. Keep it rolling. Pour on the dessert. Stretch that meal out about two hours. If you get a successful person to eat and talk for two hours, they're liable to drop ideas in your lap, change your life. Multiply your income by two, by three, by five. But you're right. Poor people don't usually take rich people out to dinner. That's the problem. The guy said he's rich, let him buy his own dinner. I'm not coming up with any money. And he says, besides, you work where I work, by the time you struggle home, it's late. You're lucky to get your own supper, let alone running around trying to find a rich man to feed. And the guy's behind on his house payment. Good worker, hard worker, sincere. But you got to be better than sincere, work hard. You wind up broke. You got to be better than a good worker. You got to be a good listener. And remember what you read and what you hear, put the good stuff in your journal. Now here's the third way to find out how to change your life. And that's to observe. You can pick up a lot of ideas just by watching. Get around successful people and watch. Here's why. Success leaves clues. Watch how the man shakes hands. Watch how the lady responds. People who do well do certain things over and over and over and over. And if you're clever, you can pick them up. Watch it all. If a guy's making $10,000 a month, I'd watch how he walks. Maybe that's it. <laughs> Copy his funny little walk. <laughs> Somebody says, well, that's kind of a silly walk. Say it's 10,000. <laughs> I haven't got the money yet, but I got the walk. <laughs> it's bound to start somewhere. What I ask you tonight is to be unusual and be a good observer of what's going on. You can pick up ideas that can change your life starting tomorrow. Just be a more careful observer. Now remember, there's two ways to see. One is called sight. See with your eyes. The other one is called insight. See with your mind. See with your eyes, you'll see things. See with your mind, you'll see answers. Put your eyes and your mind to work. And the best advice on developing sight and insight is pay attention. Don't miss anything. In the weekend seminar we teach, one of the greatest fatalities to success is preoccupation, lack of concentration. The guy's mind wanders. See, you wind up average. You've got to learn to zero in and concentrate. I read a good article one time, Reader's Digest. The title was, Wherever You Are, Be There. Excellent. Don't miss anything. Now, we've lingered a little bit long on number one here for personal development. Find out how things work, but it's so very important finding out and I've given you three ways to find out. Now here's the second step to personal development. Okay, number one was find out how things work. Here's number two, go to work. You must now take action on what you found out. In doing business around the world, we call it game plan. Put together your game plan. One of the major things we teach on the weekend seminars, game plans. 
how to game plan your office. If you're in sales, you need a game plan. Kids need a game plan. You need a home game plan, social game plan, a business game plan. Everybody needs game plans, financial independence, game plan, your investment game plan. Don't think in your head, put it on paper. Don't operate out of your mind, operate from paper. I often ask somebody, what are you going to do the next six months? And somebody starts to tell me, I say, no, don't tell me, show me. Show me your game plan for the next six months. Then I can look at things and maybe I can help. But you got to operate from paper. Put it on a game plan. Take action on what you found out. Now, here's the best word I know of to go with action. Massive. See, that'll change everything. Massive action is called the cure-all. If you're going to make calls, make a few thousand. If you're going to make contacts, make a few thousand. If you're going to knock on doors, knock on a few thousand. See, that'll change everything. Here's the language of the poor. I'll try it a time or two and see what happens. It's the way poor people talk. The guy says, well, I'll give it 30 days. 30 days. You could guess his bank balance. You've got to have a better game plan. So here's one of the major things to do starting tomorrow. Take a look at your game plan. If it isn't loaded with massive action, change it tomorrow. Action. The formula really works like this. Pick up a good idea, take heavy action. Pick up a couple of good ideas, take heavy action. That's the formula for sex, success. Heavy action. <laughs> It's a good thing we can edit all this, right? <laughs> the formula for success, take heavy action on a good idea, right? That's the ratio. Now here's the key. Don't wait till you've learned two or 3,000 things because that way you'll use up all the time and you could wind up smart and broke. And hey, it's okay to be dumb and broke. But if a guy's smart and broke, that's pitiful. Don't let your learning lead to knowledge. You'll become a fool. Let your learning lead to action. You can become wealthy. And there's many kinds of wealth. I understand that, not just money. Money's one of the least of all values. I know some people with a lot of money that are very poor. Evita sings, as for fortune and as for fame, they are illusions. They're not the solutions they promised to be. So there's all kinds of wealth, but to get a big share coming your way, you've got to have a heavy action game plan. Now here's the third step to personal development and we'll wrap up personal development. Step number three, it's just a little caution and all through life we need little cautions. This one simply says, don't try to beat the system. Find out how it works, work it, but don't try to beat it. Some people learn just enough to start slicing it, shading it, thinning it, cutting corners and looking for cheap answers. See, don't fall for that. You'll wind up with a cheap life. Find out how it works best and do it that way. Even though it seems to take a little longer, do it right. Don't compromise with right. Now under this step, here's another key. Be a quick learner. Don't let it take long to teach you. Learn quick. Don't run at the wall too many times. Learn quicker. One guy said he broke his nose seven times in the same place. <laughs> Somebody says, looks like you'd stay out of that place. Right? <laughs> Learn quicker. Now, the third point here is don't be stubborn. See, some people won't change even when a better way comes. They say, well, I've been doing it this way 30 years. Hey, be ready for change. If it's a better way, go for it but don't try to beat it. Or you'll be like the guy that went to Las Vegas. He didn't have much money. 
So he didn't want to risk his money gambling, but he gets to Las Vegas and the jackpot bells are ringing, the money's flowing, the lights are flashing, and he can't help himself. He's got to gamble. But instead of gambling with his cash, he decides to play the mon mental gambling game. And the brilliant scheme he worked out goes like this. He'd pick a number like number three. Mentally, he would bet a certain amount of money on the number. And whether it won or lost, he would jot down that amount in his little pad. I would have won $5 if I'd have made that bet, just to keep track of it, win or lose. That way, come midnight, he can calculate how he's doing, winner, loser, how much, only not his money. Keep his money. Just play this mental gambling game. So here he is around the gambling table, everybody else shelling out their hard-earned cash. He's got this brilliant scheme. Instead of betting with his money, he's betting with his mind, and he lost his mind. <laughs> Which means don't try to beat the system, I guess. Let's talk about some more parts of personal development. Here's the first one. Physical. The physical side. Got to take care of yourself. Do not neglect to take care of yourself. Good phraseology used in the Bible, in my amateur way, but let me put it to you best I can. Here's what it says. Treat your body like a temple. That's a good phrase, good suggestion. A temple meaning something you'd take extremely good care of. A temple. That's a good phrase. Treat your body like a temple, not a woodshed. A temple, a temple. Take good care. It's the only place you've got to live currently. A temple. Nutrition, my mother studied nutrition, passed it along to me, passed it along to my father, my children, my grandchildren. What a legacy that was. Learning to just take care of your stuff. Key phrase, some people don't do well because they don't feel well. They've got the gifts, they've got the skills. Maybe they just haven't taken care of themselves. They don't have the vitality. Key phrase, vitality is a major part of success. Vitality. So take care of yourself. I know a guy that raises racehorses. I'm telling you, the guy feeds his horses better than he feeds himself. He's so careful how he feeds his horses. He's so careful what they eat. He's so careful that they get everything. And because of that extreme care, I mean, these are magnificent animals. They can run like the wind. But you ought to see this guy. Ten steps up a flight of stairs, and I mean, he's all out of breath. His horses can run like the wind, and he can hardly make it up the steps. The guy takes care of his animals better than he takes care of himself. Some people feed their dogs better than they feed their kids. Physical. Now, there's all kinds of parts to physical. Here's one. Appearance is part of the physical. Never have a second chance to make a first impression. Physical side. And here's some of the best advice on appearance I can give you. It comes from ancient script again. It says, God looks on the inside. People look on the outside. Isn't that good information? Now you say, well, people shouldn't judge you by how you look. Well, let me give you a clue. They do. <laughs> they do. You can't deal in these shoulds and shouldn'ts. You'll be tipped over the rest of your life. Now, of course, when people get to know you, they'll judge you by more than what they see. But at first, they're going to take a look. So here's the best advice I can give you. Make sure the outside is a major reflection of what's going on inside the physical side a few minutes a day stay healthy a little bit of nourish a little bit of study on nutrition stay healthy key now here's the next part of personal development the spiritual part i'm an amateur on the spiritual side i do happen to believe that human beings are more than just an advanced life form 
an advanced species of the animal kingdom. I, I do believe humans are a special creation. That's just my personal belief, and I don't ask you to buy it. But here's what I do ask you to buy. If you do believe in spirituality in any manner, here's my best advice. Study it and practice it. Do not neglect your values. Do not neglect your virtues. If you do believe in spirituality, my advice is study it and practice it. Don't let it go unstudied. Don't let it go unnourished, if you do believe. That's my best advice on the spiritual side. Now here's the third part. The mental side. Part of this personal development challenge is to develop mentally. Learn, study, grow, change. It's what schooling is all about. And the human development takes time, incredible amounts of time. That's why we've taken the time for this seminar. It just takes time. Some things you can't cover in a 20-minute speech. You can't cover in a little five minute talk. It takes time. For humans, it takes seem like more time than any other life form, human beings. The little wildebeest in Africa. Guess how much time it's got as soon as it's born to be able to run with the pack so it doesn't get eaten by the lions. Guess how much time it's got? A few minutes. Not hours, not days minutes. Wow. But the human baby, wow. After 16 years, we're not sure. Right? <laughs> Unbelievable amount of time it takes. So it does take time for personal development, it does take time for spiritual development, physical development. But here's also what takes time, and that's your mental development, feeding the mind nourishing the mind. Some people read so little, they got rickets of the mind. They couldn't give you a good strong argument as to their own personal beliefs. I'm telling you, you gotta be able to pick up those ideologies. You gotta be able to pick up the philosophy. And here's the next part, you gotta be able to defend it. If you can't defend your virtues and if you can't defend your values, I'm telling you, even in the 90s, you'll fall prey to philosophies that are not in your best interest. And we've got to help our teenagers, we've got to help our kids especially to be able to debate the major life issues, the political issues and the social issues and the religious issues and the spiritual issues and the nutritional issues and, and the economic issues and all of the rest of the issues that are valuable for us to build the kind of equities we want. You got to get yourself ready. And one of the ways you got to get ready is not just physical and not just spiritual. You got to get ready mentally. And this is where Schof went to work on me, to be ready mentally to develop the philosophy and also be able to defend your virtues and your values. Welcome to this inspiring video featuring the late Jim Rome. In this video, Jim shares his insights on the seven skills that brought him the most success in life. He believed that success is not just a matter of luck or talent but rather a result of consistent efforts, discipline, and the acquisition of certain skills that can be learned and mastered over time. Through his captivating storytelling and practical advice, Jim will guide you on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment, showing you how to unlock your full potential and achieve your wildest dreams. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into Jim Rohn's seven skills for success. Let me quickly give you now a list of the skills that changed my life forever. Right, I knew how to milk cows, but it didn't pay well. Here's the first skill I learned to change my life. Getting a customer. Making a sale. If you share a unique product, talk about its merits, persuade someone that it's the best, they agree to buy, that's the simple art of sales. So we're not talking like high-powered spacecraft technical skills here. It's simply sharing something you've discovered with someone else and doing it well enough to where they agree they would like to participate. Now here's what happened when I learned sales. It multiplied my income by five. Now it didn't take that much because I wasn't doing that well in farm country, but it did multiply my income by five. 
sales, getting customers, laying that incredible foundation for an entrepreneurial career. So now I've got two skills, milking cows and making sales. Here's the next one I learned that changed me forever, and that's recruiting, introducing the business opportunity to new people, learning how to give a good invitation, learning how to give two kinds of presentation, formal and informal. And the third part of recruiting, of course, is following up. Once you start a new life, now you've got to take care of it, like a new mother would take care of her baby. You don't start a new life and abandon it. You start a new life and nourish it like a mother and protect it like a father. You've got to be both mother and father to a new person. Nourishment, ideas like a mother. Protection, help defend your new life against the encroachment of outside voices that would try to talk them out of it. So you've got to be mother and father in this art of recruiting. We call it being a sponsor. And being a sponsor is like being a bridge, helping somebody from darkness to light, from skeptic to faith, from not knowing to knowing, from no confidence in themselves to starting to gain confidence. You're the bridge that helps people from the shadows to the sunlight. It's one of the most exciting positions to occupy in all of network marketing industry is the bridge, helping people crossing the bridge out from discouragement into recognition. Being this bridge, that's what the recruiting magic is all about. You've got the answers. They've been looking for the answers. You've got the answers and you help them cross this bridge. You see something in them before they can see it in themselves. You assure them that it's possible to be more than they are. Therefore, they can earn more than they've got, have more than they possess. This is one of the great arts in the world. And here's what's exciting about this art. It pays big money. Because now you operate a unique philosophy taught first in the Bible. John Kennedy taught it in his inaugural speech. Zig Ziglar's got one of the best ways to put it. And that's the secret to wealth. The secret to wealth and fortune. First taught in the Bible. Because the question was asked, how can we achieve greatness, great wealth, great power, great influence, great recognition, great self-esteem? How can we achieve greatness? The master teacher was asked, and here was his formula for achieving personal greatness. He said, find a way to serve the many, for service to many leads to greatness, for those that are interested. Some people aren't interested, but for those that are, Service to many leads to greatness. Someone says, well, best I can do is just take care of myself, which is okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Someone says, I got enough bills of my own, I can't worry about someone else's bills. That's okay, but it doesn't lead to greatness. Greatness is helping people pay their bills, you forget about yours. Because if you help enough people pay theirs, yours disappear. Help people with problems, your problems disappear. The key to greatness, the master teacher taught, is finding a way. Now, a lot of people would like to serve many people, but they don't have a way. And what's exciting about you and your business is you've now got the way. Whether you use it or not, it's up to you. Whether you cash it in or not, is up to you. Whether you make a fortune or just a little, that's all up to you. Each person's ambition, it's called the same marketing, the same product. These products are the same for everybody here. The marketing system is the same. The difference is each person's philosophy and each person's individual ambition. But whatever your ambitions are, now you've got the ways and means. And here's what you've got the ways and means to do. Serve as many people as you would like. Now, here's what's exciting about recruiting. With what you're involved in here, you can directly and indirectly affect the lives of dozens of people. Some of you are going to directly and indirectly affect the lives of hundreds of people. And some of you, if you wish, can directly and indirectly affect the lives of thousands of people. And the pay is accordingly. If you affect a few, you earn that pay. If you affect the many, you earn that pay. But the secret is found in the Bible. Service to many leads to greatness. Now, John Kennedy said it in his inaugural speech. Here's what he said. Don't ask. Don't we wish that was the current political philosophy? Where is John Kennedy and his philosophy? John Kennedy said, don't ask. That's important if you understand philosophy. He said, don't ask what the people can do for you. Don't ask what the country can do for you. Don't ask what the government can do for you. 
That's not how you get rich. That's not how you have high self-esteem. That's not how you get trophies to put on the mantle above the fireplace, asking what the people can do for you. Don't ask, he said, what the people can do for you, but ask, what could I do for my country? And the country means the people. What could I do for the people? I want trophies. I want recognition. I want high self-esteem. I would even like, like a chance to make a fortune. John Kennedy says it's easy. Don't ask what the people can do for you, but ask, what could I do for the people? Could I directly and indirectly serve many in my country? Now, Zig probably said it best. Zig says money isn't everything, but it ranks right up there with oxygen. <laughs> Zig, you're right. Zig says, my dentist told me, Zig, only floss the teeth you want to keep. You know, forget the rest. But here, Zig is famous for this now. This is one of Zig's philosophies, and it goes right along with the other two, the Bible and John Kennedy. Here's what Zig says. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now, wanting everything you want, we call that self-interest. But it's, it, it's okay to have self-interest if you do it in a positive way. By helping enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Now, you can accomplish all that by learning this next skill called recruiting. And I learned it, and it made me fortunes. So now I've got three skills, milking cows, making sales, and recruiting. Here's the next skill I learned that paid big money, organizing. Once you got a few, get them to work together, see, and that's magic. Getting people to work together is magic. Now, yes, it's challenging, like having some, you know, several in members of your family, getting them to work together is challenging, but it's magic. Getting husband and wife to work together is challenging, but it's magic when it happens. But everything magic is challenging. Just got to jot that down. Everything magic is challenging. But once you figure out the challenge and go for it, then the magic occurs. Let me tell you how magic, how magical people working together is. Let me quote the Bible again. It says, if two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing is impossible. Just try that on for your mental size. If two or three agree on a common purpose, nothing's impossible. Everybody's looking for a challenge. Here's what I teach, especially the kids. Here's the best challenge in the world. Let's go do it. Not you go do it. Let's go do it. If two or three of us decide on a common purpose to do it, nothing's impossible. Incredible. Working together, organizing. Now, when everybody's an independent, now it's a little more challenging. Like having kids, they've each got their own opinions. They've each got their own uh, ambitions and desires. It, it's, it's challenging. You've got a variety. But that's what makes life the variety. And it is in your business, it is challenging, getting people to work together. It's like herding cats. <laughs> you know, sheep are easy. Sheep are easy. But you've got to try cats, herding cats. <laughs> But if you can possibly get it done, the power is so immense when you get people to work together. Here's one of the powers of working together, shared testimonials. If I've got somebody new and you're there and I'm there, I give them my testimonial, you give your testimonial. Maybe what tips the scales in getting me a new person is not my testimonial, but my partner's testimonial, somebody I'm working with. Their testimonial got them. Shared testimonials are so powerful. That's why getting working together is okay, is it, powerful. Now, working by yourself is okay. All this stuff is okay. Everybody needs to know, though, where are the advantages? And these are some of the advantages. I learned to organize, paid big money. Here's what I next learned to do. Promote. Promotion now pays staggering money. Now, the company comes up with what we call major promotions. Here's what you've got to come up with. The smaller promotions. The company comes up with major recognition. You've got to come up with small recognition for your people around you. The top five, the company's got top five. You've got your own top five in maybe two or three categories. Top five, top five, top five. And those little recognitions to reach certain levels in the company, you have to take major steps. But for you, recognition, let them take small steps. Here's one of the secrets of your kind of business, rewarding people for small steps of progress, rewarding people. Sometimes it's just recognition, handshake, pat on the back. Mary, you're doing a fabulous job. 
And you figure out what those recognitions are. Small steps of progress. Guess what promotion pays if you learn it well? Big money. Getting people to do something they wouldn't ordinarily do by themselves. People will do some unique things by themselves, but if you can figure out a way to say, Mary, if you do this and this, she says, well, I'll go for it. Now, she, she wouldn't have thought of that on her own. Here's what works magic. It's better than money. Money's a bit unimportant. Here's what's important. Ingenuity. The best place to wake up your ingenuity is what you're doing right now. Representing a unique product and getting customers, recruiting distributors and promoting and all this stuff. Ingenuity. Figuring out a way. If it doesn't work this way, we'll work another way. I used my ingenuity made a fortune. I learned promotion and it paid big money. Here's next I learned. Communication. How to conduct a meeting. I learned identification, logic and reason. Attack and confess. Solution. Simple deals on communication. Wasn't easy for me at first. I stood up to give my first presentation. My mind sat back down, <laughs> right? Y'all been through that? Opened my mouth, nothing came out for a while. But here's what I did. I did it again. Just jot that phrase down. I did it again. That's the secret to how I got here. 35, 40 years later, it's how I got here. I did it once, it was uncomfortable. That first presentation was so lousy. If I hadn't have been doing it, I'd have gone home. <laughs> it was not that good. But here's the secret to how I got here. I did it again, and then I did it again, and then I did it again, and I did it again. I remember when I first decided to be a little more animated, right? And walk out away from the podium, right? Get out from just behind the podium. So I got out there, and then I thought, how do you get back? <laughs> Whoa, I'm stranded out here. Remember those times? Doing something for the first time? So learn communication. How to affect other people with words. That's the greatest art in the world to learn. How to affect other people with words. Key phrase, don't be lazy in language. If you learn to use the gift of your own language wisely, it can make you a fortune and build an incredible life. Here's three other things I learned. One is to train. Training people how the business works. And then I've used another word called teach. Train and teach. And only to say this, training people how the business works, teaching is how life works. Because here's what all of us need for the 21st century, business skills and life skills. The life skills are leadership skills. The life skills are learning how to set goals. Now here's the ultimate skill to learn that can transform your life and the life of whoever will listen. The ability to inspire. Inspire means help people to look up a little higher than where they are and wish they could get there and inspire them that it's possible. Here's how we inspire, by our own testimonial. If I can do it, you can do it. Here's how else we inspire, by others' testimonial. If they can do it, Mary, you can do it. Getting people to see themselves better than they are. Getting people to see themselves richer than they are. Getting people to see themselves more capable next year than they are this year. Getting to see themselves in the future to help both your kids and your people. Here's what you must learn to do. Number one, help people to see themselves as they are. If people have made mistakes, they gotta know it. You can't go on making mistakes and hope to achieve. Mistakes have to be corrected. And you've got to do it with your children, help them to see themselves as they are. If they've messed up, here's what you've got to say. You've messed up. But here's what's important as a parent, don't leave them in the mess. Some parents, you know, tell their kids they've messed up and then they leave them in the mess. They don't paint a better picture. Here's what you could become with just a couple of more changes. Rather than this, here's what you could be. So we must help our children see themselves as they are, but here's the greatest gift, to help our children see themselves better than they are. To transport them not only past to see their mistakes, but transport them to the future to see their opportunity. To see the person they can become. My mentor had that greatest gift to help me to see myself better than I was. At first it was difficult to see, then I started to believe, and that's how I got here today. He said, one of these days, Mr. Owen, you'll walk into a room full of people, and you will hear some of them say, that's him, that's the famous man. I, I said, well, that could never happen to me. He said, trust me. If you keep working hard on the disciplines like you're doing right now, that'll happen. You'll walk into a room full of people, and you'll hear one say, that's him, that's the famous man. He saw it, and he tried to get me to see it. And now, finally, it's happened. 
I think when I walked in here today, I think I heard someone say, that's him, that's the famous man. <laughs> and if it can happen for me, it can happen for you. Just master these skills to inspire. Here's what else I, I learned, the skills of building an organization. Learn to work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. You must be like life itself, respond to deserve, not to need. It doesn't say if you need, you will have a harvest. It doesn't say if you need a harvest, you'll have a harvest. It's not what it says. It says if you plant, chances are good you'll have a harvest. If you plant, you will reap. Not if you need, you will reap. So we must be like life itself. Respond to the people who deserve it by planting, by taking the first step. Even God himself says, if you move toward me, I'll move toward you. That's the condition. You move toward me, I'll move toward you, says the Almighty. Now, he could also say, you don't move, I don't move. You say, well, that's arbitrary. Well, when you're God, you can set it up that way. <laughs> now, learn to work with the people who deserve it, not the people who need it. Now, here's what's the next step. Teach people how to deserve your time. Teach people how to deserve your attention. Teach people how to deserve a phone call. Say, Mary, you just take this one step and I take two steps. You take two steps, I take five steps. You don't step, I don't step. But this isn't hard now. You step, I step. You respond, I respond. You try, I try. You make a call, I back you up. Right? Learn to teach people how to deserve your time and your attention. Next. I learn to work by group more than individual. Here's why. 80% of the people do 20% of the business. So 20% of the people you can work with individual, 80% you have to work with by group. But group is very powerful, less confrontational. Then here's what's important for all of you to learn. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three on your back. You can help a thousand, but you can't carry three on your back. And I'm sure all of you have already gotten that experience, even though you've been here a short time. Some people will try to get on your back. That's where we got that expression. Get off. We're... That's where we got that. A guy discovered somebody on his back and said, what? I can't carry you. Get. Now, if you're like some I see here, you know, six foot four and you weigh 300 pounds, you might carry one. And if, if you were really big enough, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or something, you might carry two, but you can't carry three. When babies are born, they were not designed just to be carried. Babies were not born to be carried all their life. Someday you got to try your legs. Someday you got to try your wings. Someday you got to try. Even if you fall down, you got to try because you can't just crawl around all your life. You can't be carried all your life. So as quickly as possible, you can help a thousand, but you can't carry three. Next, don't expect the pear tree to bear apples. I used to try to change everything. You can hang apples on a pear tree. I'm telling you, it won't help. You can put up a sign. This is an apple tree. Sure enough, come the season, pears. Here's what I learned. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. You cannot change people, but they can change themselves. Incredible. Capital in your business isn't what matters. Okay? It's not the money that buys you a future. It's your skills that buy you a future. Money and no skills, and I'm telling you, you're still poor. Money and no ambition, where are you? Money and no courage, you're broke. A little bit of money and a whole lot of courage. That's all we need. I'm looking for people when I'm recruiting back in those days and the money didn't matter. What mattered to me was somebody's willingness, somebody's ingenuity, somebody's willingness to try, right? If they had a dollar to invest, that was plenty for me. A dollar and some ambition and I can show you how to get rich and it'll be one of the classic stories of the company. I go to recruit somebody, they say, I don't have any money. See, I've been looking for you for six months. <laughs> Let me show you how to do it without any money. Because here's the rules of capitalism. Got this down. You can either buy and sell, or if you're in certain circumstances, you can sell and buy. 
if you've got ambition. Now, if you haven't got ambition, we can't cure that, and money won't cure lack of ambition. But if you've got a dollar and some ambition, I'll show you how to get rich. And even if you don't have a dollar, I'll show you how to get rich, because you can sell and buy. Somebody says, as soon as the product arrives, I'll sell it. Then you don't understand. You don't understand the magic of fortune. If you say, I have to wait till it gets here to sell it. And you probably don't understand the value of your own story. Once I understood that, I knew I was going to be wealthy. That's why right in the beginning, I started giving big tips. I knew I was going to be wealthy. I say, wow, this guy tips like a rich man. Said, That's right. He tips like a rich man. <laughs> Even in the beginning, I tipped like a rich man because I knew I was going to be acting millions. For instance, a company employing 10,000 people might only need 2,000 in 10 years. People have long associated their identities with their jobs, which also provided health benefits and retirement funds. Now these job relationships are shifting as companies outsource work overseas. Maybe it's out of need or to increase profits. Either way, job loss fear is now affecting white collar workers in a new way. What else scares us? Many worry about their health due to lack of exercise, unhealthy food, or harmful substances in the air, food, and water. I believe people are more scared of these things than past disease epidemics or unsanitary conditions. They also fear the cost if they or a family member falls ill or becomes disabled.